What's up guys? Today I'm going to do a video on uh, a review video on uh, the Eagle River Railroad. So this is another Trains Train Z 2019 uh, review. And it's a review on in my opinion probably one of the best routes ever done for really any train simulator overall, but for a Train Z it is easily one of, if not the very best route. I, I, in my opinion, it is one of the best routes. Period. I pretty consistently come back to this route because it's got a little bit of everything anybody could ever want. For those of you that like steam operations, there are two official steam locomotive packs available for the route, and there's a ton of freeware. Now I'm just gonna go over the payware stuff today because well freeware is freeware. I'll go over I'll do a video on those later on but worst comes you guys can pick up the freeware and check it out yourself and you know you're not at any real loss so I'm just gonna go over the payware stuff today but there's two payware steam locomotive packs available for those of you that enjoy steam and then the route comes with all diesel locomotives. Uh, comes with some pretty unique diesel locomotives too. It's got freight and passenger operations. It's got point A to point B, loading and unloading, switching, mainline operation. It's got switchbacks. It's got some, a little bit of coastal running. It's got a dock side. You're up in the mountains right now, which is where we're at right now. Up at a, ah, oh, which one is this? This can't be. Yeah, this is can't be. At the uh, one of the logging camps, but it's got a little bit of everything for anything and everything you could want. It's even got some narrow gauge. I think the only thing that isn't on this route is. Uh, electrification, which, quite frankly, trains is probably one of the easiest, uh, easiest simulators out there to modify routes and such on. So if you really wanted electric, it would put in a little bit of work, and you could make this an electrified line if you really wanted to. But as far as operations go, it quite literally has a little bit of everything. And it comes with some pretty pretty unique rolling stock. And it comes with loading and unloading facilities for what it comes with. So you can get hours and hours and hours of fun out of this route. I personally, I uh, I think there's two other trains routes that I consistently come back. But this route, I easily easily takes the cake. I come back to this pretty much every single session I ever play on trains. So let's look at... I'm gonna go over what we get first. And what you'll get with the pack first. What you'll see, what uh... what is included. Now I'm winging it a little bit because like I said earlier, trains is a stupid, stupid easy game to uh, modify routes with, and I have mo I have my own version of the Eagle River that I have been working on expanding and modifying to my liking. So I I haven't played on the OG original. This is what you buy route in a little bit. I like to play the come back and play the scenarios every now and then because it does come with uh, four scenarios plus one if you purchase either purchase one of the steam locomotive packs available for it. But uh, the scenarios are pretty cool. But so let's let's dive into it. Now we're gonna look at the route first, and then we'll look at the rolling stock. Cause another benefit to trains is it's really, really, really easy to overlook the whole route in a video, unlike other simulators like uh, Railworks, where 
there is no easy way to jump around the route to take a pick take a look at it but trains it is extremely easy to jump around the route and look at so we're gonna I'm not gonna you know click our way through the entire length of the route I'm just gonna go to the key points and spots on the route so you guys kinda get a view of where you're getting and what there is to show let me get rid of these uh, switch points he's bothering me okay. get rid of that and let's get rid of that make it a little easier a little less distracting so this is the camp B facilities this is the furthest uh, I don't want to say northern but not necessarily yeah it's about as far north as it gets on the route this is pretty much your your end of route I guess one could say but this is the first logging camp or I guess technically second it can't be we also have a camp a logging camp further up the line but this is one of the logging camps it does have an uh, it kind of has a loader you can indeed load logs here mm, the log loader is not animated it is it's this thingy right here Which, I mean, it's a cool model, but it's not animated, so when you pull up to it, it's just going to appear, bam, you got logs in the car. So, yeah, it is what it is. At least you get to load them if, you know, you want to gear into that, point A, point B, load, unload, but <laughs> you have a log loader, and you have a sawdust loader over here. And you have a, it has a, uh, a uh, generic industry right here uh, jointed rail does their little generic industry spots and assets for those that want to modify to their liking and there's a freeware flat car that goes really well with this for like tractors and whatnot to unload there <laughs> so uh, yeah kind of a cool end of track scene over here but making it look like it might have expanded on further down up in the mountains I personally did not expand from here but you, know, you can if you want I will say the track colors don't blend very well on the route as you can see here that immediate perfect line of used unused but it is what it is Overall, it's a really, really nice route. It's got a uh, odd uh, yard, uh, kind of. It's not really a yard. It is and it isn't. And you'll pull through. If you're bringing a train up, pull it up here, here, pull it here, depending on how you have it set up. <laughs> so to get to the wood chips over here, you have to be on this inside track, and it crosses over the outside track. So if you're on this track, you got to switch through this track and then to this one. It's kind of odd, different, but you know it's in line with logging railroads. Logging railroads are very odd, and they're all unique. <laughs> no, uh, unlike the big brand railroads like a Union Pacific route or a BNSF or CPC and any of those. There's a basic overall design and look to them that goes across the board. Logging railroads do not follow that. Logging railroads can be absolutely wild. Why? Because historically they, they were. And they still are. Logging railroads are just, they're overall different. The way they do things is different. So, uh, <coughs> your switching opportunities makes for a, makes for an interesting session the way the track works but uh yeah this is can't be I personally went through and added some more uh, little people to kind of make it I guess animated kind of give it a little more life because right now it just it doesn't especially off in the woods here for a logging operation there's 
nobody out here cutting down trees there's there's no equipment out here there's just nothing <laughs> so that was kind of a kind of a drawback but easily remedied remedied sorry as I walk over my tongue but yeah this can't be let's hop down to our next location which is I call it Keen. Some of you might say Keen. I don't know. I'm calling it Keen. So, next location is Keen. Your locomotive shops are here in Keen. Your storage facilities, workshops, and your first passenger station. And a defunct, I'm going to say gravel mine because the hopper cars that come with the train or come with the route are gravel cars so I call it a defunct gravel yard I use it as storage in the original OG route in my route I have made this work but you will get a defunct yard over here makes for good storage if you just run the regular route and then you'll get a locomotive shop over here which is I like it I like the clutter around it it looks like a logging railroad just a lot of junk stuff laying around a lot of odd things <laughs> quite well done now again there's, there's very few actual little people so it kind of makes it look a little dead but the few little people there are you know, they fit in and you'll come over here to the kind of town of Keene it's just a little your little main line main street here it's a one route highway, but I turn this into a little civil war scene. Maybe if uh, there's enough interest, I'll go. I'll do a a video with my modification, but for now we're just looking at what you'll get if you buy it. So here's your keen platform train station, because uh, according to the lore, I should say this whole route is fictional. This, this is not based on any actual real route. It's just kind of a generic Northwest, maybe Canadian. I liken it a lot to Alaska railroading, logging. But according to the lore, the uh, or the quote-unquote history, the route, the uh, railroad uh, runs uh, scenic excursions on weekends. So. You, these platforms are actual active train stations. This would be your first stop. and We'll go over the second stop and if you really care to you can go back up the logging route. But uh... Yeah. It does do passenger services on the weekend so you have active train stations to do active passenger services back and forth. <laughs> but uh... Yeah it's a pretty pretty decent decently detailed little town like I said I, I go through and add in little touches my own touches kinda super detail them cuz like this right here this road ends which some places you know it, it's not unheard of but I kinda I, I thought it looked better to run it off into the into the mountains so little perks little irks and you have a big old uh, lake that uh, it's kind of bare it kind of makes me sad again just really not much going on and yeah there's no people no no fishing boats no no really nothing it's just kind of bland so i modified that too to have some little active ships but again for what you what you pay for it's pretty neat and let's see what else we have anything else special about here not really another loading platform is this one or is it it's back here another one of those generic yeah it's right here another one of those generic uh, jointed rail loading platforms that you can set up to take whatever load you want obviously it fits best with flat cars so pick your flat car and go but see anything else special here not really good passing siding so there's Keen let's go up to camp A camp A is a little s 
more simple than Camp B. Camp B is a much more larger operation. Camp B is, or Camp A almost looks more like a, almost looks more like a smaller traditional logging camp, I would say. Again, unfortunately, there's no no life. Our crane picks up its log, and that's about it. There's nothing really wild, true, freaky going on here. So, again, I modified that myself to fix. I highly recommend you pick it out. But it's got, it's a pretty neat one. It looks like an older logging camp. So, like we've got our buried siding here that's now defunct. And again, it does load. It it took me forever to figure this out, though. It does not load back here, or like I, I legitimately thought it loaded right here, and I thought the root was broken, because logically speaking, here's your loader, right? Here's your switch. Here's your run around. You pull the train in here, load it around, run the locomotive around, and yeah, call it cool. And it's false. This is your loading spot right here next to the 18 wheeler. So for those of you that might get a little frustrated going, where in the heck do you load these cars? You load it right here. Now you know. <laughs> but uh Yeah, it's a pretty pretty neat little spot. I get a kick out of our little uh our little trailer over here up on blocks. And uh, your siding for storage for the route is or for the camp bay is down here. Yeah, it's pretty decent. Like I said, I modify them to fit my desires a little more. I made this go out a little further so that you don't see just kind of a brut horizon. Not not too bad overall. That's another thing that irks me a little bit. Some spots will have roads placed down that will spawn vehicles, and some spots don't, and they inter they use them interchangeably. So you'll see a car spawn in sometimes, and they're they're run down this highway just fine, but then you'll see it spawn in like back here, and it'll go around this curve and disappear. Or like that Mustang just did. It went under the bridge and disappeared. And this one just kind of appeared. So that, that's a, not game breaking. But it's kind of one of my little pet peeves. That I, I personally went through and swapped it out for just non, uh, non-active highways. No traffic on the, uh, the little side roads. And then these main roads I do uh, traffic to have some cars. But yeah. A little oversight is what it is. <laughs> now we'll hop down to Myrtle. Myrtle is... I'm not sure. To be perfectly honest. I believe it's meant to be... Uh, here's a sawdust loader like we saw up at Comp B. I believe it's meant to be a sawdust operation, but this is not an active industry. So... I don't really know what purpose this spot serves for the route it looks like it was a logging camp at some point and now it's a defunct logging camp that would be my best guess judging by the clearing and you know whatnot but i i made it functional because you know a little more operation and uh i backdated my route my version of the route a little bit so that kind of fits not backdated so much so that it doesn't use the diesels well if I so please to, but yeah, I, I think this is a defunct logging camp is what they were shooting for. I added clutter and whatnot out here just to kinda kinda get rid of the bland flatness. And it does have I, I do know one purpose at Myrtle Service. It is a runaround. So right here you have a loop. For you know, whatever operations you so choose. And it kind of acts as a storage yard. There's not a lot of usable storage space if you use use it as also a passing siding. And obviously, coming down from Camp A over here, you can't 
really block off this track as storage because you got to be able to get out but if you're using it as a if you're using it as a runaround you effectively have this middle track right here to use as storage and that's about it because trains coming this way you'll have to pop off into that switch and run around but yeah I'm not entirely sure the full function of Myrtle so there's Myrtle I'll hop up to Nile Nile I I think it's another one of those just kind of storage I know in one of the scenarios it's they use it as a uh, a uh, dead track for putting broken down cars locomotives whatever they just kind of use it as a storage spot for uh, railroad equipment but I use it as a fun little like extra industry because of uh, some of the freeware that you can that you can pick up I move this down here. It's loading platform. I move the building down here and whatnot. And turn it into a more usable function. But let's move up, and we got a Chid, Chidlo, Chidlo. Yeah. Now there's not a lot going on with Chidlo. It's got a uh, kind of a little trailer park. I like to imagine it as a. Uh, kind of little coal miner community that runs up into up under the hills I extend that road out to kind of blend a little better but you got this little community right here and you have a gravel gravel yard again another per another uh, irk of mine is you get these these hoppers they call it they're listed as maintenance away hoppers they're gravel hoppers that's their load is gravel and this is a gravel siding but they didn't put one of their generic industries right here to load the gravel cars. It's easily fixed. You know, I'm not gonna not gonna irk on it too much. It's just kind of one of those little you know little things you notice that are like ah why. But again, it could stand to have a little little extra added to it because a how do you get here? It's just a gravel pit and there's no there's not even a dirt road to get there. So <laughs> I modified that, but that and you have your your two employees and your tractor over here. <laughs> and uh how did they get here? They drive the tractor over here across country? Don't know. But uh so yeah, this could have standed to have some more work done to it, but yeah, I'm not gonna complain. It could be worse. And another another thing is the river. You go over the river right here, right? Is it coming from an underground spring right here? Like, I feel like they could have done this better. Like, I get they You do have underground springs. They just kind of pop up. And road goes over it. I live on one of those. But I, I promise you, it's not a perfect little line here that just kind of pops up like this. It's It's got a little more going on around it, like rocks and such that have been moved out of the way dirt piled up so I, I feel like this could have been done a little better Childro could have been done decently better I think just kind of this is kind of one of my irk irk towns irk sceneries on the on the route but again overall it's not bad for what you get for what you're paying for like I said easily modifiable so where do we got next Beaver Cove Oh goodness, sorry. Or at least Beaver Cove is a large portion. So it covers from here all the way back. So Beaver Cove is going to be your other end of your line. This is where you're going to bring all of your product that you got from the logging camps. This is where you're going to drop off your logs. This is where you're going to dump off your sawdust and it's going to split back here depending on what you have so if you have your sawdust you're going to go off to the left and if you have logs you're going to go off to the right and this is your one of your storage tracks one of your sidings for the sawdust side and we'll hop over to the sawdust side first so here's a 
run around sliding and you'll effectively pull your cars up here and then push them back into here and this is your unloading spot I don't know I don't know why this is here this doesn't actually unload right here the spot doesn't actually work it's not a generic industry I changed that this one however is so if you get mad trying to push them into here and they're not unloading that's why this is not an unload spot this is just a generic stand-in siding this is the unloading siding so you'll push your cars into here ba 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 and unload them and then set them back out over here grab more rinse repeat I use this spot as a locomotives siding and a neat little feature I gather this is what it was meant for that's how I modified it but this I, the best I can gather is you were meant to bring the like maybe coal or whatever or no I'm sorry my head's getting a, a little further behind I'm thinking of my build but it's a little uh, 30 narrow gauge uh, it's kind of a little tidbit and this is again I modified it because it's legitimately just a straight track all the way out but or literally just a single track but I imagine what you were supposed to do was the narrow gauge would push some gondolas under here and whatever you unloaded over here would get loaded into here like a uh, sawdust I imagine this was meant for sawdust you would unload it here and it would get transferred to uh, transfer to the narrow gauge and the narrow gauge would bring it out to a ship's harbor which has been replaced now as you can see by a truck and a conveyor belt that Again, it could have. Yeah, they could have done it a little better. It just kind of goes ends in the hills, but <laughs> they did actually do the narrow gauge all the way out to here. So this little narrow gauge line comes. This this kind of irked me. So they took the time to do it here for the conveyor belt. They took the time to do it here. Okay, okay, and then we come over here. Nothing. <laughs> And again, it's, it's just a little oversight. I'm not going to complain. Something is easily fixable. It's just something to note for those of you that pick this road up. Just, just note it. But the narrow gauge runs runs out here. It's got kind of a little, little yard thing going on here. And then you push them over here. And I imagine you unloaded your sawdust here. And this big crane thing was meant to look like it loads it onto boats. I modified it to do just that. But with the route you get when you buy it, this is completely defunctional. This this doesn't do anything. It doesn't load or unload. You can you can set you can set a thirty narrow gauge locomotives in stock on here if you really want to, but it doesn't do anything. And then uh, you have a kind of a cool like big run around right here that is now defunct, but just kind of a neat little. I imagine it ships would pull up to here and you'd unload whatever load whatever used to run all the way around but it's kind of a cool here's your main yard right here for loading and unload or dropping off loaded and unloaded car flat cars not sure what this siding's used for other than maybe a pull through because this switch right here <laughs> goes all the way back here right and you'll unload back here You'll push your loaded flat cars back here and it'll unload right about where that crane is. I think, if I remember right. Yeah, right about where that crane is. And then pull them back out and set them out. But that's just the logging portion. So if you decide to run one of, run it like it's a Friday or a Saturday, you're running one of the steam excursions or the scenic excursions with the uh you'll come up this way and this is the little town of beaver cove now i i like the idea that they were shooting for but i feel like they could have done a little bit better scenery wise because like this this back here bothers me a lot <laughs> and uh, it kind of made me sad that they didn't do anything with the siding this would have been great for the more generic freight 
for those that want to kind of throw in a little mix of like some tank cars, box cars, flight cars, whatever. They could have used this as a more generic freight spot to say big ships come in off of wherever, wherever this is supposed to be. I assume that it's like one of the Great Lakes or maybe the Atlantic Ocean or Pacific, depending on where you where you view the route is set. I I typically picture this whole route as Alaska, so I picture this as way up north, but kind of wish they had done something with a switch, but overall it's pretty neat. This is where you'll you'll bring your passenger trains up to. Now the uh, the size of the platform leaves a little bit desired. If you try to use some of the freeware and try to make full use of uh, the passenger stock that's available to you, it, uh, it's a tight fit. It very much limits uh, how long you can, how long of a passenger train you can bring. Which I, I get it. I get you don't want these mile long passenger trains coming along, but I, I me personally, I extended this out just a little bit enough so to accommodate. Because, uh, as I'll show you guys in a minute with the uh, rolling stock that you get with, some of the rolling, st some of the passenger cars are like a super dome. That's a huge coach. Takes up a lot of space. Trying to run a locomotive around it, it's, it's a headache. So, I extended this out. But, this is the end of the route. Right back here. I, again, I feel like they could have done a little better with this end of route. If this is what they were shooting for, is like, this is the end. I personally, this is where I extended off of. Uh, I, I have modified the route to my liking, and I extended off to make a different location for a scenic railroad. Make more sense for the scenic railroad, I should say, because of all the freeware that's available. But uh, yeah, that's the end of the route, and that's all your main key points. So let's go look at the. Uh, Let's take a look at all the rolling stock that you'll get. Let me uh, pull this back up. So starting with, let's roll down here. An SD7. I assume what they were shooting for is most of the rolling stock is uh, second hand from the Burlington Northern. Hence the uh, bright green and black. But, uh, yeah, you'll get a low nose SD7 still in the Burlington Northern Green and Black with the ERSX right here underneath the cab window. I personally repainted this into the yellow because I love the Eagle River, Eagle River scheme. I just, I couldn't get behind the green. I didn't like the whole patch job, so to speak. But you'll get this. It is obviously quality, jointed rail quality. So a pretty decent overall model with very decent sounds. And you know, some of the bells and whistles, cab lights, walkway, number board, class lights, open the doors, the steps, all that fun stuff. But overall, decent looking locomotive, great sounding. Just is a little flat, and you zoom in on it, and you're like, oh, that's all these handles are flat and whatnot, but typically you're not sitting right up on it, so look at that. You get these maintenance away hoppers. They're, they're not too bad, again, as long as you don't get up right up on them. They blended really well. The biggest complaint I have is they are dynamically numbered and the dynamic numbering shows <laughs> so the number itself as you can see it's a very vibrant it's much more vibrant over the rest of the car and all the lettering it doesn't really blend in with the rest of the lettering on the car I would assume that this number would be a lot more faded and runny kind of like the uh, the Eagle River Railway up here than how they've got it, but eh, little complaint doesn't bother me that much. I really don't use these all that often. 
And you'll get this X Burlington Northern Caboose. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. It's a top end of Caboose. Well, nothing necessarily special. And decent. Yeah, there's that. Let's see, what's next? GP40s. Again, excellent models. There are, uh, per the lore, I believe the company owns three of these GP40s. So they are kind of dynamically numbered. And this goes across the board for just about everything I'm going to show you that comes with this route. They're kind of dynamically numbered. They're dynamically numbered in the sense that it's going to be random as to which number it's going to pick out when you place it. So these are numbered 2000 to 2002, I believe. 2000 to 2002. Now you can't change that. 2002, 2003. I believe this is three. Correct me if I'm mistaken. I, I preset all this up, so. I believe it's 2001 through, or 2000 through 2002, so three locomotives. And then after that, it will just keep resetting or re reshuffling through those numbers, those same numbers. But you can edit it in the editor. So you can, when you put it down, right click, edit the number manually, and it will go higher than that to 2000 and whatever you so please, depending on how many Jeeps you want. But once again, overall, an excellent model. I. I'm kind of urged that none of the radiator fans are operational. None of them are... Oh. I spoke too soon. Now it spins. Alright, well, there's a radiator fan. But as is typical, most of the lights are fiddleable with uh, jointed rail stuff. Oh, walkway lights, headlights, cab lights. Decent models overall windows, doors, visors. Yeah, I, I love the sounds on these. I love the horn on those. I run these GP40s almost exclusively when I run diesel locomotives on this route. So yeah, this is a GP40. What do we have next? GP15. Now this is one that the uh, there's only two of. 2021 and 2020. That's the only two that are available. They are not dynamically numbered. And I don't think you can edit them. So uh, according to the lore, the route only owns two of them. It's GP15-2s, I believe? Maybe? <laughs> uh, the air horns on these have always kind of gave me a giggle. <laughs> Sounds so entertaining. It's got probably one of my favorite bells overall, but... Again, as is typical, they're jointed rails, so... I got a nice list of things you can fiddle with on them, but again, sound great, look great. Overall, really decent models. What's next? Eeny, meeny, meeny. We got the BW9, number 30. Again, not dynamically numbered. This is the only one the route owns. And I believe this is a fictional locomotive. If I'm not mistaken, because I have not found a single photo of something like this in real life. <coughs> I have not found an actual real life BW9. So I assume that this is a uh, a custom model done by Joined Rail. But it's cool and it makes sense. Logging railroads are notorious for modifying locomotives to their needs or just outright building one out of stuff 
maybe parts they had lying around or maybe a defunctional locomotive combining a bunch of parts logging railroads are notorious for it so this locomotive is in my opinion probably the coolest available for this route and probably one of the coolest ideas I have seen for a route because it makes sense a custom oddball for a logging railroad so this is really really neat really really cool and this one is modifiable right yeah so you can piddle with just about everything on this one too This sounds pretty good. Obviously, since it's not based on an actual locomotive that I know of, you're, uh, you're kind of at free liberty with your sounds. If I remember right, that headlight is a gyro light. Right. Cab lights. Uh, remember, I think it's a gyro light. Uh, I'll have to fiddle with it. Yeah, that's cool. Now you will not get these specific uh, wood chip hoppers. These are the exact same model. They're just different skins. Why? Because the uh, here it is. This is the wood chip hopper that comes with the root. I. I don't know. I don't know what went wrong. Okay, I, I have... I even reverted the... files... in the, uh... content manager back to their original. At, at some point, Jointed Rail updated the files, and... this is what we got. So it still loads in, it's still functional, but it's just a blur. So... Yeah, I I dismissed this car and just downloaded their freeware widget poppers that are identical models, just different skins that aren't blurry. So yeah, technically you get this with the pack, but as you can see, it, it do be broken. So yeah, you'll get that. What's our next locomotive? Boom, a GMD-1. Number 77. Again, not dynamically numbered. This is the one unique locomotive for the route. <coughs> uh, this, base, this one is based on a real locomotive. These are Canadian. I forget which railroad used them as a short hood forward. I know many of I, I personally think it looks wonky as heck using it as a short hood forward but it comes preset and preloaded as short hood forward operations but uh I like to think of this little BMW or uh, BMW I like to think of this little BW9 as that I mean you can kind of see the resemblance I like to think of the railroad bought two or three of these and over the years they fell apart and they they built one little usable switcher out of them. Uh, but yeah, Canadian locomotive again. Stuff you can fiddle with, cab lights, whatnot. Not quite as much as their other locomotives, but the bell is kind of weak on this. Kind of quiet. That's. Uh, easily changeable trains is probably the easiest sound change functions on the planet but uh yeah, it's a decent locomotive decent model I know in the scenarios typically you'll see these two paired together I don't I usually leave that BW9 down at the saw at the uh, Beaver Cove to use as a switcher around there and I typically use this uh, GMD to run up and down to the logging mill here, up the switchbacks, because logically speaking, smaller locomotives are used for switchbacks. So uh, yeah, pretty decent locomotive overall though. Good looking. 
Sounds good. A lot of fun. You'll get these flat cars. These are your log cars. They're all right. I feel like they... I, I get what they were shooting for, but I don't like it. This looks too much to me, like, painted on the wood chips here. So, I, I get that they were shooting for, you know, wood sitting there, but... It, I don't think it played out as well as they wanted it to, but other than that, I, I love this. The chalk. Chalk number 54 for 54 foot. I don't know why they had to chalk it in here, because they opted to leave the 54 official right there, but I think it's cool. Uh, that caboose doesn't come with the root. I'll explain in a minute. But, uh, let's see, what else comes with the root pack itself? Not that. Oh, yeah. We're looking at cars now. You'll get this. They call it a brake control car, but uh, I know in other packs, it's a maintenance away sprayer, obviously. I mean, it still has all the functions of the sprayers. So, you know, you can turn them on, open the arms. And, uh, yeah, it's a weed sprayer. So, obviously, they have it listed as a brake control car, but it is most definitely a weed sprayer. So, I don't, I don't know what they were shooting for. It's cool. I love it. They make it a cool little maintenance away item. But, yeah, I, I don't know why they called it a brake control car when they included an actual caboose, but, you know, it is what it is. So you'll get that. Uh, what else do we get with the root? Oh, yeah, passenger cars. Like I said, it's uh, passenger operations. So you will get a... You'll get these uh, Boonton... Uh, I don't know if you call it a heavyweight. It's a more of an older, open-ended platform passenger car. You got this that I imagine was an old uh, railroad post office car, and uh, it's listed as a concession car. So your rolling concession stand, and then obviously a great dome, and then just a generic. It's called an open air car. I don't know why. Window, 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 window. <laughs> Closed windows, but no. These are dynamically numbered, like I said, in the sense that there are a set number of cars. Now, I typically only ever use kind of like this setup right here because this is what fits in the siding on the original route. But you know, you can use whatever for whatever. It's your go. I believe this is 90 through 94. I think I have never set down more than one great dome, so I don't know on that one. But yeah, all these are, uh, you can go in and edit them to whatever number you want. They're just, whenever you go through and set them all on the track, it's just going to keep reshuffling through the same numbers. So yeah, you'll get those three. And again, pretty decently modeled. I The numbers are kind of, they kind of stick out a little bit too much. Other than that, not too bad. I love the logo. I have modified so many locomotives and cars with that logo for personal use. So that is cool. Yeah, you'll get that. And, like I said, there are two steam locomotive packs. Excuse this one, that was a mistake on my part. There are two steam locomotive packs. They are official packs available for this route by K&L Trains. That caboose is part of one of the packs. So let's hop back here. This is the first one that they uh, that K and L put out for this route. The lore behind it is it is an ex Southern locomotive. Uh, ooh, is it a bald one? Yeah, bald one. Ex Southern. So it's got Southern valvular, which is kind of cool. Kind of kind of a different idea. I like it. I mean, imagine the southern locomotive somehow making its way we up here onto a logging railroad but uh the lore behind it is uh 
the railroad bought it for public relations and they use it for their weekend excursions and on rare occasions as a uh, freight standing freight locomotive so that's cool and you'll get these uh, older style wooden coaches and uh, this observation car this open air observation I love this open air observation model this is too cool I love it now you can pretty effectively see it's it's an older model from k and l I believe uh this is based on one of the Strasbourg style cars, and these are most definitely the same cars that you'll see for the steamtown cars, but they fit they fit in really well on this route. they go absolutely perfectly for a scenic train, but you'll get a regular coach the observation and a combine. They are, again, dynamically numbered up to, I believe, a certain point, and then you got to start inputting those different numbers that you want. So, uh, yeah. And then uh, the locomotive is his, uh, it's a modified version of his Southern uh, 280 pack. But it's, uh, it's a pretty cool uh, modification overall. It's uh, believable, I should say. And looks and sounds absolutely awesome. Now, I, I don't know what's going on with my game, but right now... Yeah, let's pull the locomotive forward and see what happens. Yep, still broke. Interesting. Can't say I've ever had that issue. Alright, it goes. Now it's catching up. Yeah. My generator steam and whistle smoke was coming out from down here, but... Again, great sounding locomotive. Not much to fiddle with. Auto, fireman, headlight, that's about it. One of my all-time favorite whistles for uh, for this game. What great looking locomotive. And we have another one that I, I found it a pleasant surprise. I found it a very pleasant idea. So this is a 480 Mastodon. This is the same model that K&L uses for the Strasburg Railroad. Because the Strasburg Railroad operates one of these. It's the Norfolk and Western model. And uh... Yeah, you... This was a surprise to me. I, I knew about I knew about the 280. That one made sense, but I, you know, this I, I don't know what he was shooting for with it, but it was cool. It was really cool. And the cars that come with it, I again, really awesome. <coughs> but uh, this one uh, I don't I haven't read the uh, I haven't read the information on it in quite some time, but. Again, it's the same model that he used for the Strasburg locomotive outside of our uh, doghouse tender here. But again, great looking locomotive and a really neat addition that fits in pretty well on this route. You know, it's something different that you you wouldn't even think about today in a normal scenic railroad outside of Strasburg's a 480 and operational preservation <laughs> typical uh, K&L quality another one of those whistles I, I really really like and you'll get an open-air car without a roof and an open-air car with a roof which looked to be kind of in the same idea that the uh, the Durango and Silverton narrow gauge used. It kind of looks like that same style where they're just old uh, gondolas that they modified into open air coaches. Uh, the only difference being on the Durango and Silverton you have a line of seats going right down the center here but I, I like to mix these in with these uh, wooden cars over here to make a little more sense because realistically speaking you're not going to be wanting to run the whole trip up and down this route standing up in an open air like that 
you'll want to sit down at some point. But uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's a covered, covered version with a uh, porta potty in the back, <laughs> and you'll get this observation car. So these are, I should also say, these are the preset uh, consist models, consist sets from uh, K and L. So you'll get those. So this is what you'll get with each separate pack. So with the two a with the two eight oh, you'll get these coaches with the 480 you'll get these so yeah you'll get those open airs you'll get this observation car which I actually typically don't use this car with the steam locomotives or actually with the with this set because it actually has a di diagram diaphragm so uh, I typically use those with the cars that you saw in Keen the newer streamline that have have the uh, the walkways like that because it, it it pairs up better, but it's it's a nice model overall. It's kind of a neat uh, neat concept, I should say. And then you'll get a caboose. Now this caboose I use extensively because uh, just overall I like it way 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 more than the green Burlington Northern car that you get. So uh yeah. That's that's what you get. That's all the stuff that's available for the uh or officially available for the Eagle River Ra Railroad that is Payware. So two Payware steam locomotives that are completely separate from the route itself, available from K and L, and then the route itself available from just train or uh, not just trains. Jointed rail. <laughs> wrong wrong simulator. Joined rail. I will obviously put a link in the description for both. For those of you wanting to pick it up, I, I highly, 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 highly recommend it. I, like I said, I I use the snot out of this route. I love it. It is perfect for what I enjoy. The, really, the only thing that won't fit in very well on this route is a large locomotive of any sort. I know. Uh, I when I, I'll do a video on most of the freeware that's available later on, but uh, I know one of the available freeware contents is a uh, an SD40, and it is uh, it looks huge on this route. So running a large steam locomotives and large diesels just it looks wrong. It especially going around some of these tighter corners, it just doesn't fit. But uh, that's really the only drawback to it. You're not going to be able to run large locomotives realistically on this route. Other than that, it's got a little bit for everybody. It's really, really hard to pass this route up. I highly recommend it. I can't recommend it enough. And I obviously, I very, very highly recommend picking up both steam locomotives for from a K&L for it to uh, really enhance it, really give it that nice little touch of historical aspect so yeah, that is the Eagle River Railroad. Uh, go pick it up. Trust me, you you will not regret it if you don't already have it. If you have it and you're just watching this video for your giggles and squiggles, let me know how much you like it. If you uh, if you don't have it though, trust me, you you can't go wrong. Pick it up. As far as train simulators go across the board, this route right here is the absolute number one. Like I've got trains, I've got railworks, I've got uh, railroads online I've got a couple others and this right here is <clears throat> what I end up coming back to every single time I, it never gets old I love it now obviously some of you everybody's got a different opinion it's just my opinion but believe you me if you enjoy logging operations or just enjoy point A's point B's and mixed opportunities this is perfect you will love it easily at 9 out of 10 the one star it would be missing is for those odd little discrepancies that I pointed out that like I said it's stupid easy to fix it take you I'd, just to modify this route as it sits to fix those little discrepancies I think it took me like 2 hours tops so yeah 9 out of 10 all day all all day
pick it up. You'll love it. You'll like it. You'll enjoy it. I'm probably going to go play it some more after this. So, uh, yeah. Have at it. Hope you guys liked it. Enjoy.